All right. Hello, everyone. Noreen here. Today I have with me Avinash. So we're in conversation with Avinash today on my special um, YouTube series um, that is available as part of Inspiring Women Hospitality, where we get to hear from other members of the industry and other industries as well. So I'm very happy to have Avinash with me today. Hello. So, Hi, Noreen. Nice hi. to be here again. <laughs> I'm going to tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, uh, my my name Avinash Menon. Um, I'm I'm currently now working in the Philippines. Um, I am a hotelier by profession. Uh, married with two kids. Uh, was uh, was born and brought up in Dubai. Moved to the Philippines in 2019, where I now work with Mega World Hotels and Resorts, which is the largest homegrown Filipino brand. Uh, of uh, in hospitality in, in in the country, and I'm very proud with that with that logo right up there, yeah. um, representing Mega World Hotels and Resorts. And it's an it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be on your show, uh, Nori. Um, you inspire a lot of us a lot. I mean, maybe inspiring women, but uh, the many of us over here who have and continue to be inspired by women like yourself. So thank you very much for having me today. Thank you so much. And it's it's a pleasure to have a true hotelier like yourself. And I know we're going to learn a lot from one another. I mean, this is a thing. We're all inspiring one another, regardless of the gender. And we have a lot to learn from each other. So today we're here to talk about two topics. The first one is on work-life balance. And the second is on gender inequality topics that are very close to you. So let's start with work-life balance. What does this mean to you, and is this achievable? All right, uh, so work-life balance, right? Um, you see, healthy work-life balance um, actually refers to maintaining a harmonious relationship between your work and professional life. Um, it involves consciously managing time and energy uh, to meet both professional and personal commitments while prioritizing self-care and well-being. Now. Poor work-life balance can have more significant impact than just a lack of time for hobbies and personal interests. I think we can all agree on that. You know, employees who work long hours or struggle to find a balance between their personal and professional lives are most, more likely uh, to struggle with fatigue um, and burnouts, uh, face anxiety, depression, other mental health issues, and or develop other stress-related health issues. Uh, to answer your question, this is achievable. Uh, while this may seem ideal, uh, it's not always possible, unfortunately. You see, I think we'll all have to learn this, Noreen, that we don't strive for the perfect schedule, um, but we strive for a more realistic one. Now, some days, you, you know, we might feel that there should be more focus on work, uh, while other days, other days you may want to have more time and energy to pursue your hobbies or spend time with loved ones. So balance is achieved over time, uh, I suppose, and not um, not every day. Uh, not, you know, not only not only is achieving a health uh, healthy work life balance an attainable goal, but I think all of us as employees, um, I'm a hotelier. Um, we we like to see the rewards too, right? Especially in the hospitality industry, when employees are balanced um, and happy, they're more productive. Uh, we've seen that around. Uh, research shows us that. I've I've seen that. Uh, we take fewer sick days and are more likely to stay in our job. So achievable, yes, not always possible, but I think it could be something that we could all strive to be, uh, to make it a more realistic, uh, realistic goal. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's leaders like yourself, like talking about this openly is so important. You know, when we come into hospitality, it's just like you just it's like the grind. You just kind of get on with it and you just do the hours, especially when we were first starting out and you don't really know any better. And it's over time that I've realized that, no, I need to incorporate both um, into my life, have time for work and things outside of work as well to give myself that time and headspace to think about other things, like you were saying, managing the stress, managing the fatigue and not, ha yeah, and absolutely having less sick days. It's so true that we incorporate both into our lives. And the more that we can encourage our team members to prioritize that, and by you setting that example, it's going to mean that, yeah, quite frankly, that they stick around longer, they deliver a great service, because if the employees are looked after, the guests will automatically be looked after as well. 
Right. Very true. <laughs> and what are some of the things that have worked for you? What are the things that you do that you can share with others um, that helps you um, achieve this balance? Obviously, it's not 100% balance all the mm -hmm. time, but as and when you need to. Uh, I think it takes a lot of practice, to be honest, Noreen. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, good work-life balance means we can be happy and productive at work and also have time for ourselves and our families. And I think that's what's understanding the fundamental and, the, and, and, and how essential this becomes part of our, of, our, of our life, right? So what I normally do is that if I feel stressed out and overwhelmed at work or at home, I must acknowledge that this is not a sign of weakness. I think that that's important to understand. It's not a sign of weakness. And ask for help and support when you need, you know, when, when you need them. Um, it's easier said than done, but we must believe in that, that people are there to help and support. What I try to do most of the time, uh, <laughs> if it's work for me, I must admit I'm a work in progress myself, right? So um, for me, it's, I've made it understand. And as you go, I suppose, higher in, in your career, uh, you you understand and know what is important in life. Um, and this includes considering passions, my passions, my interests, uh, make time for those things that make me feel alive, right? How much time do you really want to spend on your priorities? You just mentioned that. Uh, I think practicing time management, uh, that, that helps a lot, right? Uh, calendars, apps, I, I do that. I have this to-do list that I use. Uh, that's worked for me. These are useful methods for keeping track of how much you spend your time. Um, you know, I, I, I must say this, you know, I hate saying this, but we may want to realize that social media is also swallowing chunks of our day, right? Um, and that's so true. So set boundaries. I think that's what I try to do. Um, it's it's a trial and error kind of thing. Uh, if you find it hard to say no, you could try to set limits on, for, for your work time, I suppose, and pre-plan time for other activities. There are times you need to say no, right? Let people know when, you, when you'll be offline. I think that's that's important, communication. Step away from the phone, turn off your work emails, and go internet free for a few hours. I, I know it's all easier said than done, but then again, it's practice that makes perfect. It's a disciplined approach that one must have, I suppose. Uh, that has worked for me uh, to some extent. Uh, enjoy work. I think that's important, very important for me. Uh, you must do what you love and love what you do. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great catchphrase, I know, uh, something to strive for. Uh, that has helped me. Uh, nurture relationships. I just mentioned about asking for help. Um, there are times you need help. I get this from my from my wife, right? From my friends, um, acquaintances. Also, sometimes having this positive relationships, I suppose, uh, and social support will help build resilience, and that's important in the kind of work that we do and the kind of industry that uh, that I am in. Um, it also helps to 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 developing more adapt adaptive ways to cope with stress. And I think that's that's very important to know. Uh, strong relationships also take time to nurture and develop. So that that has to be, that's something that has to be borne in mind always. Um, of course, then I, I mentioned about prioritizing and I think that's important that you prioritize your quality time with your family, friends, neighbors, your loved ones. Um, focus on health, right? Um, that is also very, very essential for me. Um, I think I put this right on top of my list there. Um, exercise as much as I can. Uh, try to do this daily, right? So that uh, helps uh, it's, please help me reduce stress, anxiety, and, and depression because, you know, you never know. You never know. Um, and, of course, getting enough sleep. Uh, you know, in our, in our kind of field, that's, that's so important. Um, and, of course, having some downtime. Um, you need to take some time off. I think it's important to rest, recharge, um, because it's help, it, it, it's, it's so crucial and it's vital in helping us succeed in what we want to, in what we're trying to achieve. Um, and what is also more important to you in that aspect. So, you know, schedule your regular time off with, uh, with, uh, with your family, with your friends each week, or maybe read a book, uh, play sports, uh, spend time in nature, just do nothing, you know, <laughs> it was an activity that you enjoy. I mean, have some downtime. All these, um, all these points, not is something that I've tried to incorporate in some point of my life. Um, some have worked with, uh, have worked for me. Some um, I can definitely do better. Uh, but like I mentioned, sometimes it's easier uh, said than done. Uh, but then, of course, it's it's all mind over body, and I think it's having the disciplined approach. 
um, in trying to balance, uh, you know, your work and what you love doing most, and of course, spending time with family and friends. Yeah, it's like what you said at the beginning, it's just practice, right? And just trying to incorporate different parts. And it doesn't have to be all linear, you know, you, you pick and choose and you find what it is, just tap into yourself, and understand what it is that you need at that point. So all really, really great, uh, great um, suggestions and ideas and inspiration that we can all get. And uh, moving on to our second topic, which is gender inequality. Um, so firstly, you know, why is this important to you and what have you experienced um, during your career? You know, fantastic topic, actually, uh, that we're discussing uh, afternoon, uh, Noreen, and, you know, it's so apt as well, right? With the, with the conclusion of the recent FIFA World, Women's World Cup, mm -hmm. the price, money, disparity, and and all that women's sport is trying to actually trying to achieve, make it on par with uh, with the men's, and it uh, so 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 important. I this 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 topic is actually quite close to me, um, and you've asked why is it important? Because you know, basically and fundamentally, um, genders of key importance in defining the power, privilege, and possibilities. Um, that some people have and some people do not have in a given society, right? So, you know, we we know that um, it affects the progress towards equality and freedom from discrimination. So gender equality in a set essence makes development strong and more sustainable. Now, why is it important to me? It's because gender, gender equality prevents violence, right? Uh, that That's important. It's, it's Inequality is actually the root cause of violence against women. Right. Uh, I have a daughter. Right. And in no way do I want this uh, prevalent in our society. Right. Uh, so it's also essential from an economic uh, viewpoint in terms of prosperity. Right. It's and let's face it, Noreen, it's a human it's a human right. It's a human right. It makes our communities safer and healthier. Right. So, so societies that value women and men as equal are safer and healthier. And that's that's a given. That's just a given. And I think it's about time that all of us practice equality, um, right? Uh, because that's the only way forward, right? We're talking about us being the 21st century. It's, it's the only way forward. Agreed. Thank you for those powerful words and, yeah, having that inspiration to work towards. And so from your perspective, what are some of the things that needs to be done um, in this industry, for instance, um, to try and get to a place where we have more gender equality? Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to go basic. Um, and I think it's it stems from that. It stems from our bringing, I think, uh, Noreen. Um, I know a lot of us love to, to make comments, but how many of us actually practice it, right? And that's, I think education is the most important thing. And it starts at grassroots level. It starts with us, you know, going to school, you know, practicing and preaching all of that, all of equality, right? Uh, right right from grassroots levels, right from the start, right? Um, you know, value the un unpaid care and promote shared domestic responsibilities, for example, ensure full participation, leadership and decision making. Why should it only be men? Why can't it be a mix of both, right? Um, you know, promote equal rights to economic resources. Now I'm going basics over here because every industry has all of these, um, th th this is all embedded in every industry that uh, that that operates today, right? Uh, property ownership, for example, financial services have it on an equal basis, right? Promote empowerment of women through technology and why not, right? Adopt and strengthen policies perhaps and enforceable legislation maybe for gender equality. That's the only way you're going to get the message across, right? Work with gov local government units. I know we do it here in the Philippines um, where we work with local government units, right? Start small, right? Perhaps the state or provincial government will listen one day, right? To baby steps, uh, right? But consistency in all efforts shall hold the ultimate key. Um, so again, we go basic. We are going basics over here, Noreen. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, it's but we want to start educating people and it all starts at perhaps, you know, kindergarten upwards in school and then start that as part of our onboarding process. Now I'm talking from the hospitality industry, you know, uh, you know, how you start from your humble beginnings there, you know, educate us during, during onboarding, right. And, and spread the message, let it be a strong message sent across so that everybody's comfortable with it and it becomes part of second nature, maybe. 
Agreed. There's so much you've said there that resonates with me. There's so much research that's also being done that a child as young as six months can identify different genders already and they start associating different items or people with different genders. It's incredible how, I don't even know how they did that research, but (laughs) they did that research. And the education part also is incredibly important, which is why I'm doing this, which is why I'm doing my podcast, just to start sharing our stories and learning from one another. And I love what you said about start small. Each and every one of us can make an impact and make a difference. So wherever you can, wherever you see an opportunity, it's up to all of us um, to to do something about it. And thank you so much uh, for sharing your views on these two very important topics. Um, Hearing about this from leaders like yourself is going to be inspirational to, to many others. And with that, I will move on to my final question and ask you, who inspires you? Oh, oh. Uh. I, I I would say this is not for the benefit of your podcast, uh, Noreen, but um, it's the truth, right? The two important women in my life, right? My mother and my wife, right? And the third actually being my little girl, who's uh, who's eight years old now, right? So you imagine the women in my life. And I, I say this with all sincerity because my wife, both my mom and my wife, right, both started from, uh, from extremely humble beginnings, uh, leaving their cities for the metropolis, uh, right? Uh, my mother left. She was in India. She left to Bombay, right? Uh, now Mumbai, of course, and and my wife from her province to Manila and and Cebu, right? Uh, these are the two biggest cities in the Philippines, right? Um, they both of them left their countries, India and the Philippines, um, at a very young age, right? Both in their early twenties, right? Um, and both of them are so similar because they they display a lot of confidence. They're full of confidence. They're pillars, right? They have been my pillars at least very similar, both strong build, right? Um, and they've often helped uh, uh, helped me on my feet, right? Uh, helped my dad as well, right? When both when both of us were down at some point, right? And I, I, there's no shame in, 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 in saying that, right? Like I mentioned at the start, we need help and support sometimes, right? Um, they, they both and they continue to encourage me, right? Um, and both of them have been there through thick and thin, right? Uh, so there's a lot of, I, I owe a lot of my happiness, actually, um, and success uh, to my mother, actually, when, when growing up. And uh, as an adult, uh, to my wife, uh, who I married now to for 18 years. So both of them have been extremely instrumental in my in my success, in my development. And there's a lot you can learn uh, from both of them. And again, like I mentioned, there's, there's nothing wrong in saying that. There's nothing wrong in saying that. I think you give credit where credit is due. And I've I've, I've been blessed. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that and for sharing your insights with us today. It was a pleasure to have you on here. As as pleasure is all mine. Thank you. Thank you, Noreen, for this opportunity.